Hey guys, sorry it's been a while. I've been real, real busy at my other job. And uh, you know, I do have a daytime job. This is right now just a side thing for me. And it's been building up steam and that's the point. I'm trying to get this going so that I can make it a full-time business. Um, there's been a lot of questions people have been asking on my YouTube and I haven't been able to answer all the questions. I've just been so busy, but it's been a lot going on. Um, quite frankly, I was in a, I guess like a mental funk for a while with the business and I just wasn't feeling great about everything. I'll go over all that here in a little bit, but I want to answer some of the questions first that y'all have that I didn't get a chance to answer just yet. I'm going over this in a video so that it can benefit other people as well. Hopefully more people can see it. So trying to find it. So Dan has been following me and he has some questions and I haven't been able to answer all of them. And quite frankly, I think I've been avoiding some of his questions. Um, the thing is, is I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I'm still learning. So I want y'all to take my suggestions, recommendations, and the advice that I give y'all somewhat with a grain of salt. I mean, I'm still learning as I go and I need y'all to be able to kind of help me out too by either verifying that what I'm doing is correct or if I'm on the wrong path and I think I'm on the wrong path for some of this stuff or I have been. Um, but I've been watching YouTube videos myself and that's how I got into all this is it was information that I've learned about. So any information I pass along to y'all is the best information I have at the time. It doesn't mean everything is correct. Um, so I've learned that I've been making some mistakes and so I'll go over all that with you. Um, but first of all, so Dan's asking about the Eco Solvent ink that I'm using in my um, Epson Eco Tank printer. He says, hey buddy, can I use Eco Solvent ink with regular glossy sticker paper from sheet labels? Others have said Eco Solvent uh, works with regular papers. You know, so I actually answered this one here. Um, let me see, so I answered that one, but let me see, there's another one. Let me see, he says, he ends up saying, will the eco solvent damage the printer head and other components over time? Will there be a bug difference, a big difference in the color and quality? My labels, hang on, my labels will pretty much be water resistant and fade proof, right? So, I didn't ever actually expand that and see all the rest of that and see that you asked about the fade proof. I never actually saw that till right now. Um, but here's the thing, the eco solvent ink that I'm using, people have commented and said that it's not true eco solvent. And I think I've come to realize that, that is correct. Um, I don't know, like I said, I'm not an expert on any of this stuff. I'm still learning all of it, but like a true eco solvent ink that is used in like a rolling printer, yeah, that's genuine, real deal eco solvent. Whatever people are making that we're putting in these Epson eco tank printers, I guess it's like a water base that's completely different. I think the, the short answer is no, it shouldn't damage your printer, but you, are supposed to put it in there when the printer's brand new. You can't just replace the ink with this eco solvent. It has to be eco solvent from day one, or it's not gonna work right. It, it, it can't mix in there. It's mixing in oil and water basically. And you know that can't happen and then you're never gonna be able to clean it thoroughly so that it'll work properly after that. And I'm pretty sure it's just gonna ruin the printer if you do that and I think You've already asked another question since then and saying that you might have already done that. So I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, if you've already had regular ink in there that came with the printer and then put the eco solvent that you buy off of Etsy or eBay or, where, or Amazon or whatever, 
that's that's not going to work out and i'm pretty sure that's ruined the printer and i don't think there's any way to really fix it you could try to flush it out i, I don't know if that's possible um if I were to do it, I'd probably try to flush it out with rubbing alcohol or something like that. I really don't know. But, um, so I don't think it's real eco solvent. I don't think it's going to damage your printer if you put it in there from day one. But because it's not true eco solvent, uh, it's not, it's not fake proof. And that's what I've come to learn. So I've been doing this only for so many months. I've, sold a bunch of stickers. I've made a bunch of stickers for other people. And some of the ones I've made for other people, I've realized that they're fading real bad when they're um, red, orange, mostly red and orange. So that makes me upset. I didn't really know what I want to do. Um, obviously, I'm not trying to give y'all bad information. It's upsetting to me. I don't want to continue to start to, to keep selling stuff like that if I know that it's going to be poor quality. So what I'm going to say moving forward is that those stickers are fine for like indoor use for on laptops, um, just anything that's not out in the bright sun. If it's out in the bright sun, uh, certain colors are going to fade pretty quickly. Um, I put UV resistant laminate over it that I believe is good quality stuff. Um, but regardless, I think that I'm really disappointed in the, the how quickly certain colors are fading. So I'm not going to try to market this. What I'm doing right now is fade resistant or fade proof or anything like that because it's not, um, Right now, I'm in the process of trying to get the funding for a Roland BN20A printer. Um, all in with everything that goes with it, it's about $6,000. And I don't have that money right now. I'm trying to come up with it. I'm trying to figure out how to get financing or something like that for it. So I'm not rich. I do this on the side. It was a lot. It was a big, big stretch for me to get the... Um, what is it, the Epson Colorworks C6500 AU. Um, I mean, that printer was $4,000 with tax and everything. I put another with the all the inks, all the initial material, the rewinder I had to get for it. I mean, that's $5,000 in on that one. So that was a huge stretch for me. I didn't get any financing. I just paid cash for that one. But this Roland, it's going to be tough for me to get this because I just don't have money for it. Um, any of y'all want to contribute and help donate? I'd be more than happy to take a contribution and put it towards the business and, and continue to help learn and educate and and expand my knowledge um, so that I can help other people with this. But yeah, the stuff's not there where I want it to be yet. My labels are good from the Epson printer over here. The the color works, but the you know and the and quite frankly the the Eco Tank printer is a good printer, but that ink is not fade resistant. It's not fade proof. And, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. It's kind of upsetting for me because, you know, I, like I said, I've sold and given away a lot of stickers. Um, you know, if I have to warranty any of these, I will. Right now, I don't really have a better product to give, and that's the thing. I want to be able to have a backup. I, I want to be able to, you know, honor what I've already sold. So if anyone wants a, a you know a replacement, then I'm going to do that down the road once I can get this printer. I'm trying to not do a bunch of refunds because quite frankly, I don't have a whole lot of cash to give back right now. And so uh, if anyone has any problems with any of the stickers I've sold, then get in touch with me, you know, we'll work something out. Um, so like I said, I'm upset about that and that's not what I'm trying to do, but I want to run this as a successful business. I want to have good customers. I mean, I, I have all five-star reviews, uh, quite a few of them on my Etsy store. And I don't have any complaints. 
I don't have any complaints, but I fear every day that I'm going to get some. Um, you know, so I've already taken down stickers that I know for sure are going to fade. I don't advertise or sell those anymore. And so I'm just trying to move forward with doing what's right. And um, so, you know, let me move on and just see. I've got some probably some more questions to answer here. So, yeah, Dan asked me about converting. I've already went over all that. So, Dan, sorry, man, if I've sent you down a path that is wrong. You know, I feel real bad about all this. So, that's not what I'm trying to do. And I feel bad if you've uh, messed up a printer. Um, you know, I did say in a previous pr a, a video, quite frankly, that you were supposed to do it when it's brand new. So, I did already say that in a video a long time ago. Uh, you know, like I said, these stickers are still good for regular ones, but no, they're not going to be good for fake proof. So, unfortunately, I don't think there's going to be another option. I think that uh, basically five or six thousand dollars for rolling printers about as as cheap as it's going to be to get into it. Uh, the the benefit of the of the rolling BN twenty is that it has a cutter built in. So. Uh, you know, I don't have a cutter that's going to work with a 20 inch uh, width right now. So buying the that printer that already has a cutter built into it will benefit me. It's not supposed to be a great cutter and it's other people recommend just don't even try don't even try to use it for cutting die cut stickers. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to have the money to immediately go and buy a different cutter like a graph tech that's wide enough to cut what I need. I'll have to wait and get that later. So right now the Roland is going to have to work once I can get that. And then also the laminator I have is 25 inch laminator, 24 inch laminator. So it's going to be wide enough for the Roland BN20, which is 20 inch width. Um, so I'm just trying to do a smart move here. Um, I would like to do a HP Latex printer and a GraphTech cutter you know, just right away, but I can't afford that combo because that's, that's a lot of money. I mean, I can get a HP Latex for the same amount of money as I can get a BN20. It would be used, but then I would have to immediately go buy the Graph Tech, and uh, that'd be another couple thousand dollars at least. Um, so, yeah, that's not going to work out right now. So I'm going to just hold off. Uh, when it comes time to trying to get HP Latex, if that's what I eventually do, then the BN20s are highly desired. Um, you know, they will hold their value. People sell used ones for 6000 all the time. So, let me see if I have any more questions that I needed to answer. Um, I guess, you know, mostly it was from Dan. Dan, you also asked me how many, uh, oh, I already, uh, I already answered. Okay. I already answered about the labels. I mark them up about three times what I, what I buy them for. Um, I just figure that's a, a piece of little markup with what I have in them. Um, let me see here. Is there anything else? No, I think that that's it. But um, but yeah, I want to let y'all know about those issues I'm having. Um, so right now I'm trying to focus more on doing the labels and just uh, building up, you know, those clients and getting more and more of that business because the more money I make from that business, the more I can turn, I can put into doing the stickers. I still like the stickers. I have a lot of business inquiries for the stickers. Oh, one other question that I got a while back and I, I'm scrolling through it. I'm having a hard time finding it right now. But someone was asking, how do I get, how do I get clients? How do I get customers? Um, like I said, I'm still new to this. I don't have a crazy big amount of customers right now. Um, but honestly, I'm surprised at how much interest there is and how many inquiries I get. But with that being said, I get a lot more inquiries than I get of sales. I don't know if that's because 
my prices, um, honestly, I think that my prices are extremely competitive. I sell my labels for the same price that you can get them from the giant multi-million dollar uh, online sellers. That they're obviously able to do this stuff in a larger capacity and be able to bring the cost down. Um, they're making way more money off the sales than I am because they're able to produce them for way cheaper than I am. I mean, they do have more overhead, but um, I have to buy my material in a pretty large quantity to be able to get the prices down to what I'm selling them for. Basically, I'm buying about 15,000 labels at a time to be able to get the prices down to the, the per label price I'm selling them at. And I'm not doing any minimum uh, sales right now. Uh, at least not right now. That could change any moment. But basically, um, I, I think that people still think that it's too expensive when they're looking at buying thousands of labels all at once. I have at least one customer that's buying quite a bit of labels at a time and uh, they're only justifying it because they have another company that's basically buying their tacos from them. Uh, they have a coffee shop that's buying the tacos from them and it's a guaranteed sale and that coffee shop wants the labels on the tacos. So they are only actually buying the labels for those tacos that they're using with the coffee shop. So the coffee shop is picking up the cost of the labels basically. So they negotiate that into their contract. So they're still making the same amount of money off the tacos they normally would. And then they're just charging the, the coffee shop additional amount for those labels. And uh, so that's how they justify it. But they tell me flat out that it's expensive and that they don't use it for their normal tacos that they sell out of their trailer. Um, but I'm talking with another company right now that we're in negotiations and the price that I had was too expensive for him. And it's shocking to me because he's selling a lot of tacos and for a lot of money. And honestly, it seems like a very small amount of money, but he's looking at every penny that he, uh, you know, has to put out every single day. And we're talking about, you know, he was talking about uh, having to spend $45 a day on labels for all the tacos he's selling. And, you know, we basically had to work to, and I haven't, we haven't like actually made an official deal yet, but the price that he was happy with would have put him at spending $35 a day on, on labels. Um, he says that he's selling 500 tacos a day at an average of five dollars a taco so he's you know making at least twenty five hundred dollars a day and the difference for him was ten dollars you know forty five dollars a day on labels it was too much money but at 35 it was okay so he's going to give him a trial run i gave him some samples he's going to try them out with his team and see if they can get on board with actually wanting to use them. So I gave them enough to actually, you know, give it a try for a while. So that's another thing I give out free product sometimes just for customers to try out and see if they like it. Um, it's about making long-term sales, not a quick sale. And um, I'm trying to make, you know, get customers, clients that are going to spend money with me every single month, not just one time. So I'm not trying to mark it up and make a home run on just one sale. I want to make, you know, a long-term relationship where, you know, I can trust their, their sales on my monthly income. So I want to make it where I can kind of guarantee that they're going to be paying me around the same time every month, um, or at least, every quarterly or whatever it is. So, um, I'm have an Etsy store and I'm getting a certain amount of sales off Etsy. The way that everything works on Etsy is I'm not making much money off of it. Um, 
most of my money goes into the advertising. Uh, I just now cut off all the advertising because this month, uh, for instance, I had, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I, I'm not great with math, but I would say that 90%, let's say, let's say, let's say 85% of my revenue from Etsy went into advertising, um, shipping, and my listing fees for Etsy. Um, I'm just going to tell you numbers because it, it makes more sense like that. It's ridiculous. I did $185 in sales on Etsy this month. Not a lot of money, you know. I said, I'm not killing it out there yet. Um, but, geez, a while back I was doing maybe $20 or $30 a month on Etsy. So, it's not horrible. Um, so, I did $185 in revenue. But because I'm using marketing and I have free shipping right now um, on certain orders, not all of them. I guess I'm actually... Uh, they are paying for shipping on most of them. If it's over a certain dollar amount, I think it's like $30, then you don't pay for shipping. Um, but most of my orders are under $30. But, <laughs> okay, out of $185 that I, I made on Etsy, all that went into my pocket was $18 and change. Because the rest of it went to advertising shipping and listing fees the smallest amount of that is listing fees honestly they're pretty reasonable but uh i'm not crazy about the the advertising the way it works and i don't really i guess understand how it works um sometimes some months is high sometimes it's low but $185 and all I put in my pocket was $18. So that's messed up. So I turned off all the advertising because I really don't think that there's a high conversion rate on the advertising. I don't think that there's a lot of sales I'm making directly from the advertising. So I've cut that off and I'm going to see how that works. Um, yep. So, uh, I don't make much money off Etsy. I don't get much money off of Etsy. You know, there's not much business from Etsy. Um, the more sales I do are through, uh, Facebook. I have a couple of ads on Facebook and that's, those are free ads. I have listed basically custom stickers for sale and then I have custom labels for sale. It's just out there so people can uh, see it and then inquire about what they need. I get a lot of interest, but I don't make as many sales as I get interest, uh, but I do make quite a few sales that way. And then the um, word of mouth. Uh, word of mouth is good. And then also actually just when you go cold calling, I think that's gonna, that's the number one thing. I'm not great at it. And quite frankly, I'm trying to do a lot of uh, taco labels because that's what I have a whole lot of material for right now. And that's what the machine does the best, little 1.5 inch labels. Um, going up to a taco trailer and trying to discuss selling them labels they're not very responsive, not very responsive at all. They want to sell you something. They don't want you selling them something. It's not supposed to work that way. So, um, right away, they don't talk to you anymore after that, pretty much once they see that you're not there to buy a taco. So that didn't work out for me very well. Um, I had some advertising on the side of my vehicle one day and I was at a convenience store and the guy at the taco trailer next to it came up to me and said, Hey, I need stickers. And, um, 
And that's the thing too. There's a, a language thing where some people, you know, most people stickers and labels are all the same thing. They don't know the difference. There is no difference to them. And especially in other languages because of the, the way that the languages just cross over, I, I think that uh, sticker is is a very, very universal term and it means uh, anything that sticks to it pretty much. So a label is a sticker, a sticker is a label to most people. They don't know the difference, they don't care the difference. But um, uh, so anyways, I was like, yeah, you want stickers to hand out to his customers? And he said, no, I want I want ones to put on the tacos. And so I was like, okay, um, I know what you mean. I've got the printer for that. I've got a machine specifically set up for that. Um, so yeah, I can make you as many as you need. And so that's how I first got my first customer doing the, the label stuff. And uh, he's been a good customer. Um, and then beyond that, um, like I said, I've, I've cold called at a bakery and it took a couple of weeks for them to respond back to me, but then they did. Um, they've placed a couple of orders with me, but um, you know, so far, I guess I've been kind of lazy doing the cold call stuff. Like I said, I do still have the other job. I've got a, a family and you know, I've got a young son that likes to do a lot of things. So um, I try to split the time. And right now, honestly, I'm getting more business than what I can handle all with everything else I have going on. Um, I've had some jobs slip through the cracks where quite frankly, I just forgot to get back to someone in time. Um, you know, so I hate when something like that happens, but um, I've got a lot going on and until this becomes a full-time thing for me, it's hard to focus on it 100% all the time. So, um, you know, I apologize for not keeping up with all the videos here as well, but I try to answer questions whenever I can. Um, I appreciate all the followers, all the support, and I want to learn as much from y'all as y'all learn from me. And if there's any advice, any suggestions, or anything that y'all can add to me, please do it. Because like I said, I'm no expert. Um, I'm learning. I'm telling y'all what I learn about. It doesn't mean that all my advice is perfect. But, um, but yeah, I'm uh, going to keep going with all this. And I said, I'm going to try to get the roll in BN20. Um, I was talking with Cole Desi about financing to them. And a nice lady there named Linda was giving me information. And I plan on following through with that. I'm just, uh, quite frankly, I'm, I'm looking at trying to put down a down payment first and get together the down payment before I apply for the financing so I know exactly how much I need to get approved for. But um, I really want that so that I can move forward with the real high quality stickers. You know, when it comes down to it, um, you know, the true eco solvent or true like, uh, uh, HP, or, uh, sorry, latex ink and um, I, I believe UV are the only ones that I believe are going to be real good, high quality for stickers. So um, I want to just get my goal set on getting that rolling printer and then, um, you know, move forward with that. So any questions that y'all have for me still, please post them and uh, I'll answer what I can. And then also I, I, uh, I just purchased a, let me see. It's an IDPRT thermal printer. I got this for doing my my shipping labels, and uh, it's it's cool. It works good. The uh, I'll do another video about it. I'll explain how this all works. The cat's back there knocking over stuff. All right, but yeah, so look out for that. I'm gonna do a little video about that one. So it increases productivity and uh, trying to turn all this into a real business. And so productivity matters. Every little thing I can get to help productivity really helps out. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Please like, share, subscribe. And if you stay for this whole video, I really do appreciate it. 
you know, it helps algorithm and uh, please share the information with others too.